Okay, in this video lesson, what we're going to do is create the graphical user interface for our new and improved evil monkeys. Oh, yes. Now, the idea is just to create the window, the menu bar, uh, the panels, the, the text that we're going to have in it, all the controls necessary. And we're not going to do any gaming stuff, no gaming code whatsoever. I mean, yep. well, the, the beautiful thing is back in VTN number three, we finished the game. Right. We really just need to Updated. upgrade yep. or update the graphics engine and a couple of changes here and there. But before we can even get to that, we need a Windows environment for our game to exist in. Right. And that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Now, let me go ahead and point this out. We're not going to start with a a clean slate. We're not nope. going to start with a blank window here. Because we've been doing this a lot. Yeah, we have. And you'll notice right now we do have an Evil Monkeys project up. And it uh, it's basically a continuation from VTM number four, lesson seven, which was pre-compiled headers. Right. Okay, we're picking up from there. So right now, if Joel was to run this, what you have is just the, the standard old hello world window. With, instead of saying hello world, of course it says evil, evil monkeys. monkeys. But that's it. It's just a blank window. Right. Okay, and then we're going to start adding to this. Now, there are some name differences that we're using from that version of, um, of the precompiled headers right. lesson, if you will. And now, as you can of, see, yeah, um, as you can see, we have evil monkeys app. We have evil monkeys app instead of what we had before. That's right. And very good. <laughs> okay, I'm just harassing you. Um, app frame instead of main frame as we used before. That's right. And if we just look over here, as you can see, everything's the same. We already have an event table created. It's which empty. Is, it's empty. Um, but this will be convenient for us to just add whatever events we want to handle. Yeah, we're just trying to prevent ourselves from typing something over and over and over that you guys have seen before. Right, we don't really want to bore you guys anyway. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough enough making it through the thousands of lines of new code that we've got to add. That's right. And in the header file, of course, it's just exactly the same thing as before and we have our declare event tables otherwise it's pretty much the same oh you also need to notice that we did add pre-compiled headers so for every new cpp file we create we're going to make sure we add std wx right so it takes care of all the wx widget stuff for us that's right okay so with that let's go ahead and start building something oh yes um we can start out in the header file actually and let's first create the actual controls that we need now we're going to let me let me go ahead and start the program just so i can kind of outline which, sure. what we want to create um, we want to create a file menu mm -hmm. that, as we had before, we have new, load, about, and exit. Um, and we want one main panel that covers the entire to, window. To help make this even easier, by any chance, do you still have your folder open? Uh, no, okay. I don't. Um, but anyways, um, you have the main panel here. And on the right, we're going to have what is called an info panel. Well, we, we made the name. Right. Um, and inside, that's going to hold the different information about the enemies, what level you're at, etc., and then on the left is going to be a WX window that holds the actual game, which we're, what we're going to see. Um, so let's go ahead and exit out of that. So the first thing we're going to need is the actual WX panel that's going to cover the entire window. So we'll call this M underscore panel. And this guy we'll just call M underscore, kind of ahead of myself, M underscore info panel. And that's the panel for the right-hand side. Right, where the information is going to be held. And the, the other three things we need are just the static text. Now, we're not going to put the menu here because we don't really need to put that. We in don't our need members. to keep it with us at all times. The whole yeah. times, right? So we'll create a WX static text, and we'll just call this ST for static text, player lives. And for this guy right here, we'll call this current level, and this will be num enemies. So very simple. Now we actually can use these inside of our code. So we come over to the app frame constructor. And but first things, we're going to create the menu system. Yeah, we'll start. We'll work our way from top to bottom. Right. Um, so the first thing we're going to create is our WX menu bar, kind of like we did in the event handling um, lesson in the last VTM. So we have our menu bar, and that's going to equal a new WX menu bar. Got to create an instance of it. And the menu, we're going to create a new menu called menu file. Menu file equals new WX menu. And in the file, we're going to add... Now we can start appending. We're going to start appending the things we need. So we, we're going to call this ID, ID underscore new. Right, we'll set up our ID list in just a minute. Right. So we'll call this one um, new. And let's just copy and paste this four times. So we have our load. We have our about. Excuse me. And our exit. Let's put the ampersand there. Now, just we, for can kids. Do, now we can go ahead and introduce them to the, the separator yes, as well. Yes, we can. Um... As you can see, up in most file menus, you have separators in here. We want to do the same thing for our program. So we'll say menu file append separator. Did I spell that right? No, it's an OR. I always forget that. Um, separator. And we'll just copy and paste this. And one other thing that, whoa, let's put that on the end here. 
Um, we need to change this ID to be ID load, this ID to be ID about, and finally ID exit. And now just so we stay in sync, let's go ahead and go over and yeah, um, definitely. create uh, our ID list. So we can come into here and our good old enum, ID underscore list. Now let's not forget our semicolon. And this will be ID ID new, and we'll start out at 400 because that's because Joel just loves 400. Yes, 400 is a great, great number, almost better than Fibonacci's number. <laughs> Wait, Fibonacci doesn't have a number. Um, it's a sequence. It's a sequence. Um, so we have that. Okay. And let's go back to here, and let's just compile this to make. Well, one more thing before we do. D does WX Frame know about our menu? Uh, no, it has mm. absolutely no clue whatsoever. But you've done a great job of putting it together in memory. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last thing we need to do is append this menu, this actual menu, our file menu, to the menu bar. So let's go ahead and append that. Um, so append menu file to our, and we'll give it a name of file because that only makes sense. And finally, we're going to set the menu bar of our WX frame, our app frame, to the menu bar that we have. So menu underscore bar. And let's not forget to capitalize B. I would like it to automatically do it, but it won't. So let's compile this to make sure it works. And ooh, ooh. the first step to Evil Monkeys. And when you click on it, you have all these different things. Oh, to look choose. at all the great separators too. Yes, for sure. And so let's ec well, <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, yeah, it would be really scary <laughs> if that worked right now. Um, so let's exit out of that. Now let's go ahead and start creating the main panel. So m underscore panel is going to equal our new WX panel. And the parent's going to be, of course, this. And we'll just give it an ID of negative 1. We don't really need to handle any of its events. And then let's create the info panel, which is going to be the guy on the right. Which is going to go inside Ins of m underscore panel. So, so you want to make sure that that, that... that is the parent, m underscore panel. Exactly. And, of course, we don't need him to have a menu either. And we'll set the default him to have a default position because we're going to be using an auto layout here. So the position is, is, irrelevant. is completely irrelevant. But um, size is important here. The size is important because we want to have a constant width. So we'll give it a width of, say, 200. Um, the height isn't actually important because we're going to have it automatically adjust its height. And we'll give it a border static, which gives it that kind of indented look, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Now what we need to do is create the game window, which is going to be the guy on the left. So we'll create a new WX window. And his parent is, of course, going to be M underscore panel. He doesn't need an ID, or at least not yet. And what we're going to do is give him a default position as well. So default position. And his size doesn't really matter. So, But we can give it just a size if you really... It doesn't, it doesn't make any <laughs> difference, but um, we can just do that. And finally, we can give it a border static, just like the guy above. So now we have those two things, the last two things. So we got two we, panels in a window. Two panels in a window. The other thing we need is the three text controls. So let's go ahead and say ST player lives. And I'm not going to type it out for all three. I'm just going to do it for one. And then it's going to magically appear. No, not really. Um, <laughs> it will with the aid of copy and paste. Yes, it will. And it doesn't need any ID so far. Of course, you're saying the parent is M underscore info underscore panel. That's right. And we're going to give it a default text of lives. Of course, we're going to change this when the game starts updating. Right. And we'll give it a default position. WX de yeah, default position. And let's see. We also want to give it um, a size, a set size. So we'll give it a width of 100 and a height of 15. Um, the width and height do matter in this case because it will be used. And the other thing we need is to say WX ST no auto resize. And basically what this is doing is when we update the number of lives or the actual caption for this, um, if, if this isn't set, then it'll automatically change the size. And since we're using an auto layout, that will make the entire panel kind of grow and shrink, and we don't want that. So let's copy this entire line. And two more paste. Two more paste. And all we need to do is say ST current level and ST num enemies. Whoa. Num enemies. And let's just change their default caption to enemies and this guy to level. So everything we need is now created. Now we just need to make the relationship set between them. So we'll use a WX box sizer. And we'll create a pointer to it. And let's see, a box sizer. And this is going to be WX horizontal. Because we have a horizontal well, layout. It, yeah, it's, we're laying things out from left to right. Exactly. So for this guy, let's just add the, the main panel in the game window. So we'll do an add 
the M underscore panel and the game window. Oh, I'm sorry, not M panel, M info panel, excuse me. And this guy, we don't want him to grow, as we said before. Um, well, I'm putting grow here, but we don't want him to grow as in the sense of stretch, hence why we put the zero here. Right. Otherwise, it would proportionally stretch with the window. We wouldn't want that. And we do want to have a border on all sides. And we do not want it to stretch, so we'll put stretch not. And we want a border of five, so that, that looks good. And we'll just copy and paste this guy. And instead of here, we'll have our game window. And we do want him to stretch proportionally, don't we? We want him to get bigger right. as the window is stretched. Um, so we'll give him a value of one. And he does want to grow. Uh, we do want him to stretch, though. And we want a border of five. So that's, that's perfect. Now we want another sizer for the info panel that lays out the different information in a vertical form. So we want our WX box sizer. And this is going to be called sub sizer. And it's going to equal new box sizer and we're going to call this WX vertical. Thank you. And let's add all the necessary controls in here. Subber sizer. And let's just add our ST player lives in here. We do not want them to stretch. We do want a border on the side and on the top of five. So that's good. And of course, without extra typing, let's just copy and paste everything we need. So that's almost everything. Almost everything. Do not forget to set the actual, to actually use this layout or sizer that we've created. So the M underscore panel, we want him to set auto layout equal to true. And M underscore panel, we, it needs to know which sizer we want to use. So set the sizer to our main sizer. And we need to do the exact same thing for M info panel. So M info panel, set auto layout, set that to true. And M underscore info panel. We want him to set the sizer to equal our sub sizer. So that should be everything. Cool. So let's go ahead and compile this and make sure that everything whoa didn't work. Um it's lowercase, it's supposed to be uppercase. I'm special like that. Um uh, let's compile that. Okay, let me just go back over into here and make sure. Well, it seems like I totally forgot to create it here. So that's no worries. We can just go into here and say Toby X window. <laughs> game window. No wonder it wouldn't know where it is. And it doesn't know what it's it is. Know what it is. Nice. So links. If we run this, check Ooh. it out. It now has a border on all the sides. It has the info panel that we want on the right. And it has that border static that I was talking about, which gives kind of an indented look, which is kind of cool. And, and, and. And. And let's go ahead and come over here and drag it out a little bit. Ooh. And so now you can see that we are staying static on this side, at least at least horizontally. Vertically, though, I mean, it is going to it's going to grow with us. Right. And in this side over here, it's growing all the way around. So Exactly. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. So I guess that's going to be... What well, this no, is. I said we go a little bit further. Okay. How, oh, how right. about let's go and set forgot. up our event table? That's a good idea. Um, so let's exit this guy out. And let's go over to the app frame here. And let's just add the different events that we want in here. So just getting ourselves set up. We're not going to go ahead. We're not going to code the functionality. Right. Here. Just getting set up. So we'll create our menu and just tab it here. So ID new. And our app frame is going to point to, let's say, on new function. Okay. Um, so let's copy and paste this. We're just going to handle our menu events for now. So we have our load, we have our about, and we have our exit. So on load. Isn't typing fun? Oh, yeah. Isn't watching someone type fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so under app frame, we'll just go ahead and add these guys. So we have our void on new. And just like before, we're going to have our command event, and it's going to be a reference to. And we'll just do the exact same thing. So on load, on about, on a boot, and on exit. And one last thing is we have the, basically the template for it. Let me not do that. <laughs> and we also need to implement them. So we're just going to implement some empty functions for now. So this is going to be app frame on new and we'll just give it a a body here sounds like we're modeling even though we're programming it's funny um, so on load on about and on exit so if everything is right it should link properly now and look everything is 
absolutely the Still same as before. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do anything when you click on any of the menu options. But, but internally, it is actually it's calling those up. functions. I mean, right now, it'd be no big deal to just say throw a WX message box in there and say "Hi world" when you click on something. Exactly. And there you go. In fact, we can just go ahead and, and just do real, about quick, real quick. Yeah, do the about window. So WX message box. Um, don't forget your underscore T. And we'll say... The uh, Evil Monkeys game. I don't know. Evil Monkeys game of doom. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, I know. Um, and and then the give title. It a, yeah, we'll uh, just give it about. About good. Evil Monkeys. <laughs> Man, I'm good at this. Run for your lives. <laughs> Run for your lives. Um, so let's link this. See, so now being set up like this, look how easy it was to go in there and add. Go ahead. About functionality. Ta-da! <laughs> the Evil Monkeys game of doom. Okay. There you go. So, uh, big step, I think. I think so, too. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to take things a whole lot further, though. We're actually going to grab our game co code that we created back in VTM right. number three. and get, Implement it with yeah, this. Yeah, get it implemented into this right here. And uh, But this is this is really a, a major step here because we now have the foundation in place for getting our game over into the wonderful world of Windows. That's right. Okay, so with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks, everyone.